Hey everybody, it's Jalen, and we are talking about Black Panther Wakanda forever. I've got a giant pimple on my forehead. I don't know if y'all can see it, but we're going to do the review anyway. I'm not going to lie, y'all. I was truly blown away by this movie. Um, I don't cry often when I see movies, and this had me tear up a little bit. Not gonna lie, I, 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 I teared up. I was thoroughly impressed with the acting. I was thoroughly impressed with the soundtrack. It was hidden. So we start off with Shuri rushing to try and save her brother. And everyone in the science lab is freaking out. And, you know, the, the computer voice is trying to talk to Shuri and asking her what to do and she's panicking. And I really loved this scene because they didn't shy away from Chadwick's death at all. It wasn't like we're gonna hide behind the Thanos snap, like maybe he, cause that's what I came in expecting that he, T'Challa would have been uh, snapped away or something like that. But they confronted it head on and they had the character mimic the actual person chadwick and i'm glad that they did that because they could have easily made up some like crazy comic book you know um reason why t'challa's not here but it helps us to remember chadwick but we move to the funeral slash tribute for t'challa slash chadwick and I'm not gonna lie, it was hyped up for me. Everyone who I was talking to about the movie, they were like, you gotta see it the way that they tribute Chadwick. It was phenomenal, I was crying. So when that happens and I go to see a movie, I'm expecting like fireworks and, you know, but the tribute, because it was so hyped up for me, it seemed like it wasn't enough. It seemed like it wasn't enough just to me personally. Um, I love the dancing and, you know, the costumes and stuff, but it seemed to move a little fast for me, the whole tribute and saying goodbye, but, you know, I think it was just hyped up from my end. We fast forward and Queen Ramonda, also somebody let me know in the comments, is it Ramonda, is it Ramunda? because they were saying this lady's name all different types of ways in this movie. And I was like, can we just get on the same page about how to pronounce this queen's name? She's with the United Nations and she comes in. Angela Bassett is a queen in real life. She is slaying this role. She comes in with her, you know, long dress and her crown. And it's so beautiful. And everyone's like, well, nice to meet you. Nice to see you, Queen Ramunda. Um, mind sharing that vibranium. And when I tell you she goes in, she's like, absolutely not. That is what my country values the most, vibranium. And we think you think we're going to give it to you after I caught you trying to steal it? And so she already has the evidence uploaded to the United Nations. And there was a moment in this movie where I was like, Angela Bassett is pulling a lot of weight. And I'm like, is she going to be Black Panther? Because all the work she's doing, I'm like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised. We flash to a ship. I don't know what they were looking for. I guess they were looking for vibranium. But there's a ship, the FBI, or I don't know what the Marvel people are named. But... They're looking for something in the sea. And when I tell you blue fish people jump up out. And I was like, is this an Avatar Marvel Universe crossover? Because y'all, they literally had the Avatar trailer play before this movie. So my mind is already going to the Avatar people, way of water, right? So when they jump up and they're blue, I'm like, is this the Avatar people? Watching those fish people kill everybody, that was actually terrifying. I know that this isn't a horror movie, but this is the first time I've been scared in a movie theater in a long time. Like, watching the lady try to run for help, 
And then I thought she was going to escape. But when we see our main villain, Namor, grab the helicopter and throw them back into the ocean, I felt like they were a threat. I didn't know who these fish people were, but I knew that the Wakandans were in trouble. So Queen Ramonda and Shuri are grieving and they're talking and, you know, Okoye is like, she's got to get out of the house. She's got to get out this lab. So Queen Ramonda takes her down to, you know, talk around the fire, just just to get to know where she's at. Like, you've been through a lot. Let's, let's talk about some things. And they're talking about grief and spirituality. And Shuri doesn't really believe that much. But then Namor comes up out the ocean. I'm not going to lie, y'all. Every, almost every time I saw his little ankle wings, I wanted to burst into laughter. Like, I get it. I know that Namor, in the comic books, those wings are actually a thing. But the CGI just made it look like... It was just something funky with the wings. So every time I saw the wings and it was trying to be a serious moment, I just couldn't take it seriously. So Namor threatens them and says, look, somebody's been checking for us. Somebody has found vibranium. Go get the genius that knows how to find vibranium. Bring them to me and we won't have any problems. I don't want to start a war. I don't want no problems. So please find that genius so that we can kill them and go about our day. Okoye and Shuri go to find the genius against Queen Ramunda's will. Because Queen Ramunda, she's in a vulnerable place right now. She just lost her son. And, you know, Okoye's like, it'll be good for her. So they go. They go to Columbia and they find Riri Williams. And when I tell you this was some of the funniest scene work in the movie so they sneak they get they get into riri's room cut shuri knocks on riri's door and it's like oh how did you i guess she sent her like some you know they do that little technology nerdy you know gizmo gadget thing and so riri's like how did you and she's like yeah i'm from wakanda she's telling her all the stuff but then Okoye comes, just pops up from out her bathroom and is like, you're coming with us now. And it was so funny because Riri, she's a college student. She's like, I'm not doing, I'm not going with you. And of course, us watching the movie, we're like, just go with her. But when you really think about it, Riri was justified. You, these two strangers are popping up out of nowhere. One has a spear. They're cutting up all your stuff. You know, like, I was on Riri's side with that. But it was funny, you know, Riri talking about uh, Okoye's head. We get to the garage where apparently Riri does most of her work. And it's a lot of illegal and, like, you know, cracking code types of stuff. And this is where it's revealed that she has been working on suits, a suit of armor, too. She works on um, vehicles and everything. But the FBI are tracking them. I'm not going to lie, y'all. I thought the chase scene was a little unnecessary because it was like, there were a lot of moments in the chase scene where I was like, what is happening? Because I was like, is Riri running from them? Or are they all running from the cops and are running together? And there was a moment where Riri fall, goes up into the sky blows up like an airplane y'all can correct me in the comments if i'm wrong blows up like an airplane so that the airplane comes down and explodes in front of them to help okoye and shuri get away from the fbi and it was so because riri had like become unconscious and i was like what just happened i don't know did y'all feel the same way let me know after the chase scene, Shuri and Riri get knocked out just from all of that being chased. The fish people catch up to them. And Okoye is the only one conscious. And again, those fish people, those Avatar people, look so dangerous. And so they came up 
And I was like, oh, Okoye's got this. It's Okoye. She's got this. And when I tell you the fight started, and I got, I started getting really scared for Okoye. I was like, is she, she going to die right now? Because she was getting tore up. She was getting tore up. She was fighting for her life, but she, she, that, that, that fish person had hands. Okoye loses the battle and is thrown into the water. And I was actually grateful that she just was thrown into the water because it looked like she was about to die. Shuri wakes up as soon as they're about to kill Riri and is like, take me with you. Tell your king to take me as hostage instead. So they take both the girls and Okoye is left in the water. Okoye goes back to Wakanda and is telling everybody, you know what, gi giant fish people showed up and I lost the princess. And there was this silence and I knew exactly what was about to happen because it sounded, Okoye, it sounded like you didn't do your job. Queen Ramunda goes off. Queen Ramunda is like, you're fired. You're fired. You lost the one person I have left in my life after I told you I didn't want you to go out there with her. And not only that, I don't have anything else. Do you really think you're about to keep your job right now? Again, Angela Bassett acting down. She went to Yale and she does not care who sees. So it was really hard to see Okoye get fired like that because we as the audience, we see Okoye, but we also see where Queen Ramunda's coming from. And to be honest, Queen Ramunda was right. Namor is chilling with Shuri and is like, you know, I'm not really such a bad person. I'm just trying to kill this genius so that my people can thrive. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Namor takes Shuri on this underwater date and I don't know, y'all let me know. It just felt like Namor was macking on Shuri a little bit, like trying to get with Shuri just a little bit. It felt like a date. That's what I would, that's what how I saw it. He's showing her his world. And I love underwater stuff. I love underwater imagery and fantasy, but I'm not gonna lie to y'all. I felt like this is not a place that I would want to live because everything was moving so slow. Like it felt like, you know, the people were waving and it was waving like this. And I'm like, if I live there, y'all, I don't, I, I don't have the patience like that. I don't think I could live in this underwater environment. So it is revealed, he reveals all the history, how he came to be and how, you know, he never really grew up with a lot of love and how he, basically came out the womb fighting for his people. He reveals this is why that he has to kill Riri. And I felt like that didn't really make sense to me because there's so many geniuses in the Marvel universe. And I'm like, why we gotta kill this black girl? This one little 19 year old black girl, like, I don't know if you're doing your job as a king if this one girl is such a threat to you. Ramonda, Queen Ramonda, let me put my queen on her name. Queen Ramonda finding Shuri. She finds Nakia and it's revealed that Nakia has been hiding out since Chadwick's death. And she's like, I need you to go get my girl. There's a scene where Nakia is looking at the ocean and I'm like, how you gonna fight the ocean? Every time I think about these Avatar people, the Takatans, I don't, I'm sorry if I mispronounced their names, the Talcottans, Talcoans. Every time they came on, I was just like, how are y'all gonna fight people who live in the water? There's a moment where Nakia is coming to rescue Shuri and she's like, Shuri, I'm gonna need you to move to the left so I can kill her. She was like, no, 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 don't kill her. And she kills her. Of course, Namor is not happy. Cut. When Namor finds her dying body, I knew it was a wrap. I knew that they were going to war. It was over right then and there. 
there was a giant attack on Wakanda, and I have never felt so scared for the Wakandans. There is flooding. There are water grenades. There are whales. And the Wakandans got demolished. There's a moment where M'Baku tries to do something, and M'Baku gets punched like 50 feet away. Like, it just was... The Wakandans got wrecked. Shuri tries to like use the like battleship to try and fight Namor, but none of it is working. Nothing anybody is doing is working against these fish people. And I was genuinely scared for the Wakandans. Namor sees the queen and throws a water grenade at her. And there's a moment where she's drowning. And I'm like, Angela Bassett, even when you're drowning, you're beautiful. Even when this woman is acting her death, she is beautiful. So Queen Ramunda saves Riri's life, but ends up losing hers. And of course, they're trying to resuscitate Queen Ramunda, and she does not resuscitate. And this part of the movie, I was like, she just lost her brother and her mother? I don't know how much more this woman can take. So there's a scene where Shuri's in the lab with uh, Riri and she's trying to figure out how to get revenge on Namor, how to destroy this threat. And the soundtrack was so beautiful in the background. And Shuri's plan is to reconstruct the herb so that she can become the Black Panther of everything Shuri was going through. And it just seemed like fighting these fish people was so impossible. So finally she makes the herb and um, Nakia's standing by. She's like, if you die, you know, I got you. And Riri's like, that, it's that serious? And they're like, yeah, it's that serious. So Shuri goes into the astral plane and we're thinking she's going to see Queen Ramonda, maybe T'Challa. And in the audience, we're like, oh, we're going to see T'Challa here. Like maybe they'll do CGI like they did in Star Wars. And it's Michael B. Jordan. A part of me was like, Michael B. Jordan, why are you in this movie? But then another part of me was like, how could you not be in the movie? How could you not? How could we not have Killmonger in the movie? Killmonger reveals to her that she actually has so much revenge in her heart. And that's her real motivations for doing this. And Shuri's like, no, that's not it. You don't know me. She wakes up and she punches the suit of armor. And she's had, she has the Black Panther powers. So Shuri drops down in her Black Panther outfit and she's like, I got this. We got this. A Black Panther is back. We can take this man. Wakandans on a ship in the ocean. And they're like geared up. They got their suits. They're ready to go. They got Black Panther. They're ready to go. But I'm looking at this and I'm like, y'all decided to take the fight to the ocean y'all didn't just like you know i'll meet you halfway and we fight on the beach you took the fight to the people who live in the ocean i was upset about that but they have a plan so they're fighting, the Wakandans are fighting, the fish people, and they're, they're throwing each other off the side of the ship so that they can fight. And it's getting crazy. And then turns out Okoye is using the suit of armor now, so she goes to fight the general guy again. And this time she's winning. You got Riri Williams, and I know the comic book fans were so happy to see that Ironheart costume, because that thing looked crazy crazy there's a moment where Ironheart is even fighting in the water and I'm like dang the flames on the machine are th burning so fast that you can even travel underwater it was crazy um the Wakandans seem to be actually winning but then here come all these water grenades right and the fish lady actually blows up the sound waves that they were using to fight the fish people Shuri's plan is to dry Namor out dry him out and if she can keep him from the water they can fight on fair terms they are tearing each other up and there's a moment where 
Namor stab Shuri with a spear. And I genuinely thought that was the end of the movie right there. Like, I thought there was no coming back from that. But watching her break off the spear, jumping in front of him, and screaming Wakanda forever, that was beautiful. She's about to chop his head off. And Queen Ramon just like, show him who you are. And instead of chopping off his head, she shows him mercy and has him yield. And a part of me was like, no, Shuri, chop his head off. But then a, another part of me was like, if this black actress cuts off this um, Mexican man's head, I think that it would start a race war on Twitter. And y'all hear me out. I feel as though what was trying to be said in this movie is that sometimes we'll have different like race wars of like, oh, this, this group of people has struggled the most or this people, this group of people has it the worst. And sometimes we do have to see each other as humans. We could talk about who's had it worst all day, but I think that's what the movie was trying to say, is that we both come, diff from, come from different struggles and we can work together. Of course, peace is restored to Wakanda, um, the Tarkatans retreat, and all seems to be well in the world. And Shuri still has some business to take care of. She's traveling and she has this pair of clothes with her and she burns the outfit that was first revealed when we first saw her with Chadwick. And it was really, that's the moment I started tearing up. That's the moment I started tearing up because seeing Chadwick and seeing the grief of trying to struggle, trying to move forward without somebody in your life and knowing that they will never be in your life again. That hurts. But surprise, surprise, we think the movie's over. Surprise, surprise. Nakia says, hey, Shuri, um, this your nephew. By the way, you know, I never got to tell you, but, you know, T'Challa and I had a son together. And I was, it, it made me, I don't, I don't know the comic validity, the comic, um, you know, validity to it all, but I I didn't know what was trying to be said here, but I guess it's like T'Challa will live on, Chadwick will live on, and the people that you choose to love. And I'm glad that, you know, Prince T'Challa got to meet Queen Ramunda. I'm talking to T'Challa Jr. got to meet Queen Ramunda because I thought that this kid had Queen Ramunda and T'Challa right there like all hope is not lost there is always a future y'all I loved this movie they honored Chadwick in such a beautiful way um people were wondering what they were going to do with this movie how do you make a movie when your lead actor has passed away, I think they did a beautiful job. Props to every single actor in this cast. Props to Ryan Kruger, the director. They really honored Chadwick's legacy and I'm really blown away. For me personally, I at first was so upset why people when Chadwick passed, everybody just was like, well, who's going to be the next Black Panther? Literally the next day or even in the next few hours. And I was like, his life is more than these movies. And to see this movie, I see why people were so adamant about what was going to happen to the next Black Panther. And I understand now. 
Please let me know what you thought about the movie. Did you go see it with your cousins for Thanksgiving? Did you have a good time? What didn't you like about the movie? Talk to me. This is Jalen, and I'll see you next time.